1970, I lost my mom to um, colorectal cancer, which is cancer of the colon and the rectum. At that time, cancer wasn't um, something people used to talk about. It was more like a taboo. And um, she was flown abroad. She died in England, and um, her body came back. We thought um, we had seen the end of that, not until 1995 when I lost my father to cancer of the stomach. And it was very devastating because yes, as a child at that time, I didn't know, um, I didn't really know much about cancer, but when it happened to my father, it was very traumatic, you know? And that was how I started um, Care Organization Public Enlightenment COPE in 1995. Dear Mommy, I hope you are getting well. Hope you will like to come back before the end of January 1970. Please, Mommy, may God cure your sickness. Amen. We all miss you at the Christmas time and the New Year. Please help me to thank the doctors and the nurses who are taking care of you. I am your daughter. I wrote these letters when I was seven years old. They were addressed to my dying mom, stricken by cancer. The memory is still fresh today. I also remember the letters my dad and siblings wrote. As you might have seen, both Bayo and Ebun are now back home with us. But in spite of all this, my home cannot be what it used to be without you, the light. Heidi, darling, I cannot describe or express in words how much I miss you. You know very well in your heart of hearts that you are the only true love in my heart. We're praying hard that the Almighty God may not only give you the strength to write, but that you shall come back to me as soon as possible. Life is so dull without you. Please, Heidi, make haste and come back to me quickly, as I am really battling hard to live just because of your conspicuous absence from home. As a matter of fact, my darling wife, everything nice, everything pleasant, and anything beautiful suggests you and you only to me. For how long will I continue to bear your absence from home? Apart from my ardent yearning for your love, Every other thing is fine at home. It was never working, writing these letters and waiting for a reply from my mom that never came. A telegram dated 21st of February 1970 announcing her death eventually came. It read, Deeply regret your wife died today. Please contact Nigeria House, London. Signed, Dr. True Love. Radcliffe Infirmary, Oxford. Many years later, I also lost my dad to cancer. I have walked in their shoes. I feel the pain of those who have a loved one diagnosed with cancer or lost a loved one to it. That is why I'm passionate about hope and my determination to bring hope. October 2011, I discovered I had a lump in my breast. So that took me to the hospital and it was analyzed to be breast cancer. Sometime in June 2013, I did a personal examination of my two breasts. So I noticed there was a lump in the left breast. So I told my husband. I said, let me see. So when she opened it, I touched the place. It was very hard. I asked her, is she pain? Is it pain? She said no. She said, better go and see your doctor now. But this could be that problem that we were talking about. Yeah, 28. When I was in church, the pastor of church, he was a big boy, he was a big boy, he was a big boy, he was a big he was a big boy, he was a koko wa ma bi kon fowo kon ibi oyun won mo ti fu owo wo ibi oyun mi ni 
ni ba wa ri pe koko kan wa nbe okere so ba sha sari lo so do na si kan la dugbo na si ba ni ah kin lo si eh general hospital eko and they checked uh, initially they couldn't conclude what the lump was actually if it was cancerous or not so I had to undergo a series of tests before the final test showed that it was cancerous. Then I, I didn't know the hospital to go to, so I visited many hospitals. But in the end, somebody said I should go to Luf. So when I got there, I saw a doctor. He sent me to go and do a breast scan, which I did. He said he wasn't comfortable with the result. I should go and do a mammogram. I went for that. He still wasn't comfortable with the result. So he said I should go and do a biopsy. Yeah. So when I took the result to him, that was when he told me I had breast cancer. Test to test, she did that. One shot, and he came to me. I'm from the Mary. I'm going to show you a shot. No, Bani, cancer, no one. In order for us to certify whether that, whether that lump is cancer or not. They examined her and they discovered that it's a, it's, a, it's a breast cancer. I felt bad, but I was hopeful though. It wasn't easy. I broke down. I cried. I thought I was going to die. Uh, you know how it is when you hear the name cancer, it's as if the world is coming to an end. So when I had it, I just said it couldn't be me. But then I knew I wasn't going to die, so I was hopeful. The doctors, the nurses consoled me. They say it's not the end of my life. I should, I should come in imme immediately for an operation, a mastectomy. So which I did. Initially, I disagreed completely because I told her that I told him that, I mean, I have a God that can solve all problems. There's no need for us to cut that breast. But eventually, we discovered we have to go to camp because the, the cancer is, is on both breasts. But after going to camp for about six, seven days, we discovered that the breast, uh, the cancer had moved from one breast to the other. So we have to cut the one that is there and leave the other one uh, that is empty remaining. It has not been easy for us, and uh, being a pensioner that I am now, uh, it's not easy for me at all. Every time she goes to the hospital, every time she goes for treatment, every time she goes for radiotherapy, and so on, and we've just been managing life to okay. make sure that we do these things. My husband has been so wonderful. Right from the one, he has been so supportive, financially, spiritually and otherwise. At the time of the diagnosis, I was into a relationship and after the surgery and everything, the relationship ended. I had stories of men running away from their, house, or from, from their wives when they have breast cancer. It paid me to the morrow because why husbands are supposed to be the support of wives. They are supposed to be there when they need them at that critical period. Nothing like a lo lot of love or loss of anything. It's just that occasionally you may not feel very happy as a human being. But most times, thank God that we have had our children when they came without any problem. So that's no problem at all. We're coping with life. Ma koko bi 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 oko mina ti ma tele mi ono ngbe mi wano moto. Ono ma di mi mo ti ma fi dele. Ni pa nye gwan ni to ba ni eni to le gbara ti. Gba ye gwan ni kansa ma ante te yon pa nyo ju. So pa ti ti oko me fumi ni bi kemo terapi nye. Ono je ki wa ni aye. Because that thing is very painful. And if you really love your wife, you will know that that pains, that pains should be part of you. The two of you should bear the pains of it. And that was what I did for my wife. And I give God the glory because all the places we went to, we, we, ran a, we, we did a lot of running and we thank God that today she's sound. In 
one of my visits to Luf, somebody told me about COPE. When you say COPE, some people might actually ask me that um, my mother had colorectal, my father had stomach, why um, breast? I had a scare, that was why I started breast. I had a scare, it, it made me realize that there are just three parts that cannot be cancerous and I was lectured by the doctor. When I came back was when I realized that a lot of people, even my friends, didn't know what breast cancer was at that time. And some people still don't know what breast cancer is. So I thought to myself that I could start something, you know, the enlightenment campaign, let people know more about it. So I got a few friends together to talk about it, you know. We came together and that was how we started um, COP. COP has been so, 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 so supportive. They had given me the upliftments that my spirits actually needed. So each time I go there, I feel hopeful, I feel at home, I see people, so it's not only me after all. So I feel, okay, if we're in, in this together, we can also come out of it together. Helping financially, word of encouragement, prayers, and all that. We offer um, the breast ultrasound scan to women who have breast cancer and those who don't have. It's more like a check. We do that every third um, Saturday of the month. We also offer a um, support group. We have breast cancer survivors who come here. We give them the necessary tools to survive. Then on nutrition, people come, you know, to tell us what and what not to eat. In terms of exercise, people come in to, to assist us, tell us the type of exercise to do. We also offer to them financial assistance when we have it. And what people used to buy 100,000, 70,000, Cope gave it to me free of charge. And the bra we use is not something you see in the open market. It was coop that I saw that. Here, this you have the breast foam and the bra. This is the prosthetic bra. All you need to do is whatever side of the breast that has been removed, you just insert this into the side that has been affected, that has been removed. You just insert the form, breast form, in, into it, and then you can, you're good to go. And if it's this side, you can see that the breast looks, this looks more like a breast. Those who don't know a place like Coop, they get their bras from abroad. And I don't think it would have been easier for me to, to do that if I had not been a member. Because what discourages um, a lot of women from having a mastectomy done is the fact that they feel they're going to be less of a woman, there's nothing there, they can't put on their bras and feel comfortable. So we now decided um, to go into offering them the bras, wigs, all the tools that they need to regain their self-confidence. <sighs> I don't think I would have gotten the kind of encouragement I got in COPE. Because aside from COPE, no other person had given me such till now. If an organization like COPE wasn't there, I don't think I would have gone far. Probably I would have felt even bad, more bad than I had been. And when it comes to finance, COPE has been so, 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 so wonderful in so many ways. I state categorically that breast cancer is not a death sentence if detected early. That early is very key. Those who have not been diagnosed, I'll advise them to always go for regular checkup. Which you run to COPE because COPE has a lot of way to assist cancer survivors. 
So for me, and for quite a lot of other people, breast cancer is not a death sentence. I definitely would, um, I will acknowledge quite a lot of organizations. I just to mention um, Skybank, um, Citibank, Cadbury, UBA, just to mention a few. But most importantly, the very vibrant and formidable board of trustees that have been very supportive ever since we established COPE. Um, without them, I don't think that COPE will be standing today. I must acknowledge them and the Lagos State um, Ministry as well, especially Lagos State um, Television and um, the radio Echo FM. They actually practically give birth to, to COPE. I thank them so much. Hello daddy, how you doing? Hope mama's doing okay. Been four years and eleven months now. Hello, it was true what you said to me. The life in the city is unbelievable. Struggle just to get by every day, and I could barely find my way. Shoo, mom, mom, mom,